Chapter 11. Bang. No! Screamed Eric, jumping between Gertrude and the rifle. <clears throat> he knocked the gun out of Batter's hands as he did so. Bang! A shot rang out. The bullet exploded through the snack bar roof. Boof! Whoop! Cried the gorilla. Gertrude was terrified and charged at Batter. Their heads clonked together. Doink! Both fell to the ground. Knocked out cold. What on earth do you think you were doing, boy? shouted Sid. I was just trying to save Gertrude, protested Eric. You could have got yourself killed. Killed! I'm sorry. And now we're in deep, deep doo-doo. Eric looked back at the pair sprawled on the ground. Do you think they're all right? he asked. Gertrude or Batter? I said. Well, the boy hesitated. I, I was thinking of the gorilla. Come on, we need to sort both of them out. This is what they did. They found a large wheelbarrow, normally used to ferry dung around the zoo. Ladies first, announced Sid, and with great effort they lifted Gertrude into it. She was wheeled back to her cage, which they thought was the safest place for her despite the damage to the roof. First Sid and Eric untied the rope and then attached it to the top of the roof. Next, using the branches of a nearby tree as a pulley, they hoisted the top of the cage back into position. And then to stop it from falling down again, they tied it off around the trunk of a tree. To hide the damage, they put some hay and twigs around the top of the cage so they could see, so you couldn't see where the roof had been torn off. And there's a shot of them with the wheelbarrow and the enormous gorilla. Finally, they wheeled Gertrude into her cage, gently lifted her onto the wheelbarrow and sat her down uh, on the bed of straw. The gorilla snored away. <sniffs> she looks peaceful when she sleeps, remarked Eric. Let's get out of him before she comes to, replied the Sid. That was a nasty bump on the head. She might wake up in a foul mood. No, but we'd be safest on the other side of the cage. Uh, no, but we'd be safest on the other side of this cage. Come on. The boy gave his friend a good night kiss on her forehead, just like his mum and dad used to do to him. Sleep tight, he said. By the time they were out of her cage, dawn was rising over the zoo. With the sun up, Eric and Sid could see the plumes of thick black smoke rising up all over London. This must have been one of the worst nights of bombing in the war so far. Night after night, building by building, London was being flattened. If the explosions of the bombs didn't bring death and destruction, then the blaze, blazes they caused, would. So many buildings in London would now be nothing but a blackened shell. Looking up at the sky above, Inked with smoke, Eric felt lucky to be alive. Although he was meant to be tucked up in bed at his grandma's house, perhaps the zoo was the safest place to be after all. Now Eric and Sid had to act fast. Soon, more and more people who worked at the zoo would be arriving. They'd be asking questions as to why the night watchman was sprawled out on the ground. When they finally got back to the snack bar to deal with Butter, the man and his rifle were nowhere to be seen. He's gone, called out Eric. Oh, no, I haven't, said Batter as he stepped out of the shadows. You two are in ginormous trouble. And chapter 12 is entitled Deep Doo Doo. And we'll read that tomorrow. Have a good day.